Good morning, guys. I'm drinking some coffee in one of my cute little Target cat mugs. I saw a new one recently when I was in Target last and I couldn't pass it up. It was so cute. It was kind of more like a vintage cup and I just had to have it because it had cats on it. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Melissa. We do all the planty stuff here on this channel. And for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple new plants that I bought and we're gonna be taking care of them. I found these at a Home Depot. I wasn't filming on this trip. I just was in there looking around and I happened to see a new section. It's called Leaf Joy. They had a lot of like Calathea, Alocasia, they had some common ones too, but they had like ficus, rojo congo, a few different varieties of alocasia, just all sorts of plants. And I could not leave these two. I had to get them. I think it's been a week since I got these. So I feel like they've acclimated enough time. Well, this one, I don't really per se had to have acclimated, but this alocasia, I wanted to let acclimate and I'm gonna go ahead and repot it. This one is the Sinuata or Quilted Dreams. I saw this there and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This alocasia is so cool. I can't tell if there's a flower bud bloom here in the middle or not, or if that's a new leaf. I can't tell yet. And it has a couple like discoloration spots. Like here we have some yellowing and there's like a chunk missing out of this leaf over here, but it has five leaves and the shape is kind of cool. I love like the dark green and the texture of it. This one was $19.99. You get this glass like ceramic vase and it's potted into a nursery pot. It's not steady at all. And it just looks like it's in that like cocoa peat stuff. It looks kind of compacted and not very aerated. They had a few plants in these water vessels and these were kind of expensive. This one was $19.99 as well. I didn't want to pay that much for this, honestly. I was willing to pay that for the alocasia because I love them, but I don't know. I've always wanted a Tenanthe Burl Marxi. So Tenanthe is a lot easier to care for, in my opinion, than like Calatheas. If you've been wanting to branch out and try a plant in the Marantasia family, I would definitely try a Tenanthe. I feel like they're a little bit more hardy in the sense that they're not as finicky, I guess. So my plan with this one is I don't wanna leave this plant in water and I don't know how long this plant has been in this little vessel. You can see all the roots here and there. My plan is I wanna make a little DIY wick system. And what I mean, I don't use wick systems. So what I mean by that is since this plant has been living in water, I don't want this plant to shock transitioning this plant to soil because these roots are not soil roots. And in my environment, things tend to dry out quickly and I don't want this plant to stress. I feel like it's gonna need extra moisture for at least two weeks. I'm gonna be potting it into just one of my nursery pots and it has, you know, the drain holes. And then this is just a Starbucks plastic cup. So what I plan to do is to fill this with water probably to the bottom line on the Starbucks cup, like right here. I'm gonna use this little cotton rope. I think it's cotton. I got this from a different self-watering pot that I had, but I never used the string because I don't use self-watering pots. So all I'm gonna do is feed it through one of the bottom holes like that. This is actually a little long. I'm probably gonna cut this in half and then just like plant it up probably over top the soil like that and then just let it sit in the water. So that wick here will wick up the water and keep the soil moist because I wanna keep the soil moist for a couple weeks as this plant transitions to soil and then I'm gonna remove the wick system setup. And all I'd have to do is just like literally just pull the string out from the bottom of the pot. And then I'm just gonna plant it into, I also got this pot, this is a ceramic pot that I got at Home Depot. I think this was $7.99. And all I wanna do is just like pull out the string and then it'll already be in soil and then I can just sit it into a pretty pot. And I think this one I wanna put in my bathroom in that 
west window that I have in there. I think it would really love the bathroom. And this one I do probably want to put in my plant room here. I just, I just have to find a spot for it. But I'm really excited for this like DIY wick system just because I don't do wick systems, but if you want to buy a plant that comes like this, that would be my advice, especially depending on like the plant species. Definitely for these kind of sensitive plants that love water, I definitely recommend doing something like this. Come here. Hi. <laughs> Come here, babies. Oh, okay. Hi, my love. Hi. You want the string? What's that? Yeah. These guys were just outside. The little baby geese, the goslings have hatched. So they're just so cute running around the yard. And it's so warm outside now. So the cats have been loving like being outside now. And I don't let them in my plant room anymore unless I'm in here. She's doing better. She's definitely like still not back to herself. She doesn't really run. Um, she started playing a little bit with the other cats this week, which is really good. Yeah. So hopefully whatever this was just passes. And she'll be back to herself in no time. Are you gonna lay on my repotting table? You guys might have Luna for part of this video. So I'm trying to think which one I wanna do first. I feel like since the allocation one's gonna be a bit messy since she's up here right now, let me do the wick system one. You can't eat that. Those are my shears, those are sharp. So I'm gonna, since this string is a little bit long, I'm gonna cut it in half. And I will let her play with one half. <laughs> So all I'm going to do is basically, like I said, just feed it through the bottom like that. And I'm going to add some soil into the bottom of this pot. It's going to do like just one scoop in here. What are you doing? <laughs> Here's your string over here. Yeah. Go get it. <laughs> Don't eat it though. All right, our little Tenanthi cute little plant. I will probably use this cute vessel for maybe some props. The cork like cuts in half is how they had it, like that. Very curious. So here are all the roots that you can see. So I'm just going to literally just plant it down in here like this. Over here, get the string. Here, why don't we, go get it. Go get it. Good girl. <laughs> don't eat it, I'm gonna keep an eye on you. So I'm just gonna fill up around. I saw a huge one of these the other day in an Ace Hardware and it was so beautiful. So I'm glad I found this little one. It's so cute finding like little plants. I kind of miss the, the little plant stage. I don't know. I love baby plants. Have a little tray so i'm going to water her in i am going to use some super thrive and i just use a couple drops i don't know three four drops this is probably maybe close to three cups of water And I am saturating the soil because I want this plant, this wet, this soil to be completely wet. And in my little Starbucks cup, we're gonna fill to that first black line on the cup. It's just under where the nursery pot sits. Plant this down in here like that. So you can see the wick is in the water. 
but the nursery pot isn't. There's room that the, um, you know, the pot isn't sitting in water, just the wick. So the wick is going to wick up moisture and keep the soil wet. And again, I'm gonna leave it in the setup for like two weeks. And yeah, I'll probably just change out the water. I'll just lift this up and change it out when it gets dirty. It's already kind of dirty from like watering it. Uh, it's probably gonna drip a little bit more because it was still, let me dump a little bit more of that out. So this plant should transition in here just fine. I don't imagine it really stressing or shocking. You know, it could potentially stress, but as long as you give the, as long as the care environment is good, like it's in a place receiving light, it's not in like a cold, dry, dark place, it's gonna be happy. If the care environment it's in is happy, it's gonna help this plant recover. And I mean, I didn't really mess with the roots. It's just, it's just the fact that we're transitioning this plant from water to soil. So I just have to be mindful to not let the soil dry out. So that's why this wick system like this is perfect. You just want those little roots to adjust to soil. If you have water props that were in water for some time and you have a hard time transitioning them to soil, I would recommend potting them up separately into soil and doing something like this. And then once they establish, you can add them to your main pot with soil, like repot them together and add them in. So definitely if you struggle with water props, to pot them up separately, do something like this and then add them back in because they'll adjust a lot better. You just don't want the cuttings to dry out. And I don't recommend doing the wick system for the whole plant because if the whole plant stays really moist, then you're gonna risk overwatering the rest of the plant and not just the cuttings. Yeah, I hope you guys like this little DIY setup. I'm actually just gonna plop this into here. And then I'm gonna stick this in my bathroom and then I'll just make sure to change this out so that it's like fresh water and just make sure that it doesn't go all the way dry. The wick is at the bottom, so even if the water evaporates and is like all the way down here, it'll still wick up water as long as there's water in this little reservoir here. This is just Castile soap and water. Give the leaves a little wipe down. Okay, I'm gonna set this one aside here and then we will get to our alocasia. It's got a few roots coming out of the bottom, but I just don't like the soil, so we're gonna get rid of this. It's really important to let alocasias acclimate. Got one corn to your space, even if the soil is wet, I don't recommend repotting them right away. You can give them bright light and you can take the plant out of the pot and let it sit on a towel to absorb some moisture so that you're, if you're concerned the soil is too wet. But I would definitely just let it, give it a week or so to acclimate before you try to repot it. And I'm very gentle, like I wanna remove a good chunk of this soil, so I just try to do it very gently Got another corm. Oh, got another one. Sometimes I just like to like give it a little shake and a lot of that soil will just fall off on its own. I don't see a plug though for this one, so that's good. It's like a lot of the times the Plants at the big box stores, you know, they'll have those root plugs. Another corn baby, another corn baby. Wow, I have five corns. It is interesting because a lot of the roots are like coiled up here at the base. Hmm. I'm not gonna untangle that though. I got a good chunk of that soil off. Okay, I washed the same pot, the plastic pot the alocasia was in. I feel like the size is good. I didn't wanna go up like any larger. I feel like based off the root system, I feel like a four inch would probably be a little too small. So I think this is perfect. So we're going to fill up. Yeah. 
This allocation might shock a little bit just because I did mess with the root system quite a bit. But we are like pretty much into the growing season. I mean, it's pretty warm here already in Savannah. So I feel like they won't stress as much than if I were like repotting over winter. I'm still gonna, oops, I'm still gonna water with Super Thrive. And I just like to shimmy and shake and just make sure all the little air pockets are filled in. And again, I haven't cleaned these leaves yet, so I'm just going to spray. I don't think this one has any kind of fungal issue going on because that's what I was worried about. I've had it sitting in my kitchen area by that east window. We're gonna let that to kind of air dry with the fans blowing in here. And we have five corms that I'm going to peel. I'm just gonna peel them off camera just cause it takes a little while. That's the five corms. And then I brought out a cup of fluval and we will plant them into fluval. And then I will show you these guys up close and where I plan on putting them. And yeah, that'll be it for this video. So I will be right back. Here is a closer look at the DIY wick system. So this was the Tenanthi Burl Marxie. And you can see the wick, the plant isn't down into the water, the pot, and then the string is just in the water. And then when that reservoir gets close to being empty, I'll just refill it. And hopefully in a couple weeks, the plant will transition to soil and then I can just remove the wick and That'll be it for that one. So I'm gonna put this one in my bathroom, like I said. And this was the Alocasia sinuata. Look at that. Just gorgeous, those leaves. And I planted it in my normal mix there. And I'll probably find like a cute nursery pot for it. I imagine I'm probably gonna put it, I might be able to squeeze it over here with the other ones. And all the little corms I'm going to put into my cabinet here. So I just labeled the name and the date and there's five of them in there. I just peeled them and filled the water levels to the top. I usually keep topping it off when it gets to be about halfway because when they start to dry out, like this one you can see, it's still a little moist. The water level is probably here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add water just so the top of it can be more moist because it's starting to dry out a little bit. So I did these ones in my last alocasia video along with the caprias, which I stuck a different corm in here with the caprias. As you can see, that's a different one I did. But yeah, same thing. I'm gonna top this one off as well just to keep the top moist. Over here somewhere, there's a spot for them. And look at all these, you guys. <laughs> These were the Dragon's Breath and the Azalani. Look at how cute those are. These are all in fluval. I'm probably gonna be taking these big ones out of here soon and I'll probably pot them into the mother pot. So stinking cute. Over here in my bathroom, I'm gonna leave this plant up here by the window. Right up here. The I think it's really gonna like it and appreciate that bright light and it's gonna transition well. It's more humid here in my bathroom too. I have a Calathea in here as well as a beautiful big Maranta in here that loves it. I have a golden pothos I need to repot in here too. It's gonna do so well in that spot. I'm so excited to have that one. And the Sinuata, I went ahead and put in like a little basket there and I put it in my window because it's really gonna appreciate the bright light. Cause you can see all the light coming in. So I'll monitor it and see how it does. If it seems like it's too much light, what I'll probably do is move one of those guys and, or maybe like squeeze him down there with the rest of them. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you decide to do one of those DIY self-watering setups for some of your water props, let me know how it goes for you. If they do better or transition to soil better, I'm actually curious. Or if you've done something like that before. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will keep you updated and I will talk to you guys later.